I entitled this sermon, God's Plans vs. Zombies. And um, originally, <coughs> I wanted to uh, talk about the difference between um, um, us and the rest of the world. Um, it kind of evolved from there. But uh, uh, let's pray here. Uh, Father God, uh, uh, I'm so blessed to be uh, in your house and uh, the privilege to speak uh, to uh, your children. And I just ask that uh, uh, this message can um, uh, strike a chord with, uh, uh, with my friends here and, and learn something and just give, uh, calm my nerves and, and let us be awesome for everybody. I know I'll, I'll get blessed by it. And I just ask everybody else to get blessed too. And as we really look into uh, your purpose for everything. Um, so the big question, uh, uh, what I really based this off of is, uh, I don't know, for some reason when I do stuff like this, is I get one shot. I'm like, let's do it big. Let's do it huge. And it might be a good idea, maybe not. But <laughs> it is, I'm trying to answer the question, why did God create us? Why are we here? Um, um, and why? And uh, I would, uh, before doing the study, I would have said something like, um, well, why do you want, why did you want a child? Why did you want a baby? And uh, it could be some uh, different reasons, you know, create someone you could love, and did God need to do that? Uh, did, you know, he seems, seems pretty noble. Did God need to have fellowship with us to create us to, for, for fellowship? And that's, um, that is a uh, big purpose, but he has, uh, you know, God is, you know, three parts of Trinity, and they had perfect um, uh, communion with each other. And I like, I like Pastor Dan's. Uh, one of his sayings is, you know, we are privileged. God has, you know, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, and he pulls up a seat and says, you can, you, you can be here too, and you, we want fellowship with you. Um, um, so I, <laughs> doing, some, doing some research, I found on uh, Yahoo Answers, I just um, found the answer to the question, what is mankind's purpose on earth? And uh, there's some funny ones. Um, most most of these seem like you know they're atheists. You know there is no purpose. There is no plan. There is no invisible sky critter. The best at best we are an accident in time and space, a collection of loosely combined molecules responding to our environment. Someone said we have no purpose. We're simply here. It is up to us to make uh, our existence purposeful. Um, we are. Someone said we aren't made for a purpose. And tools are made for a purpose. We're not. The, sk the sky, the mountains, the stars, they're all just happenstance. And one of my favorite ones is um, <laughs> uh, to be as snarky as possible and further development of sarcasm into an art form that transformed physics as we know it. <laughs> and that's <laughs> basic internet response. Uh, uh, but, but the first answer, uh, the one on the top, um, I thought was great. Um, is to be in a relationship with the Creator and to give Him praise, the glory and honor due Him. In other words, to worship Him. However, since sin entered the world through disobedience, mankind cannot approach God, who is holy and righteous. That is why Jesus was sent to earth, so that our sins could be forgiven and that through Him we could enter into a relationship with our Father and call Him Abba, or Father. And I was pleasantly surprised that was uh, at the top there. I'm thinking if it was a Google answer, it wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't have been up so high. <laughs> um, um, originally, I probably tricked you all here. Uh, originally, the, I was going to have more zombies in my sermon, <laughs> but it kind of it kind of changed from there. Um, I, I I really do like uh, zombies, zombie stories. Um, I, I don't know what it is. Just uh, it seems people work together. Um, zombie outbreak, people. Uh, people come together, and and you you can you can go kill people, but that's okay because they're not they're not really alive anyway. <laughs> and it's kind of my morbid thing, but I I like <laughs> I like uh, I like the zombie stories. And um, uh, as a joke I found is a 
a lawyer, a doctor, and a zombie walk into a bar. Three zombies walk out. <laughs> As one I made up. That uh, <laughs> I didn't make up that one. <laughs> um, uh, the one I, I kind of made up, and it's kind of a joke, and it kind of was serious. And like, what's the difference between a zombie and an atheist? Okay, one is a soulless mass of flesh, wandering the earth, surviving on primal urges. The other is a zombie. <laughs> um, but are we just zombies? Uh, no soul, just a bunch of bones and flesh, aimlessly roaming the earth, uh, a product of pure biomatter. Are we a product of our surroundings? Uh, do we have a choice, free will? Uh, what's the difference between zombies and someone who just, um, as an atheist, would, would think someone you know, without a soul? Uh, but I believe that, and I think most people would think that um, there's more to life. We're not, we, we do have choices. Uh, and even someone without God would say, we do have a purpose. There's, there's, uh, um, there's more than just, just this fleshly matter. Um, but why did... Um, why did God create us, and what, what is our purpose? Um, oh, um, now, it's not so much, um, I didn't get into what is our calling, what is, um, what is our duties and our goals as Christians. Um, uh, I, <laughs> I took a BuzzFeed, uh, I usually don't do that, a quiz, and you just punch in little, they ask you silly little questions, and, and I got... Um, what is my purpose in life? To rule the world. That's, <laughs> that's with, I'm sure there's a bunch of scientists <laughs> thinking up these quizzes. <laughs> you are meant to rule the world, maybe metaphorically, maybe literally. Perhaps all the world's governments will collapse and you alone will lead the planet. Zombie apocalypse, right? <laughs> Either way, good for you. <laughs> um, and... Um, and trying to get both um, both sides of of the story. What is you know what did why did God create us or what? Um, and uh, I stumbled upon uh, this uh, atheist blogger, and I, I'll try to answer the question: What is our purpose? And he had um, a lot of theology. He went on you know through a page of of good things. Uh, good philosophy things, and and his final um, reason, uh, uh, our purpose was, um, purpose of life is to encourage desires that, uh, the purpose of life is to encourage desires that tend to fulfill other desires and discourage desires that tend to thwart other desires. Um, so, uh, it made it sound like that, you know, f help try to fulfill other people's, people's desires and to knock down barriers, not fulfilling their desires. And if you read it, it can make sense with his explanation. If you read the whole thing um, uh, on the surface, you know, help help your fellow man, you know, that's nothing really wrong with that. You know, of course, what if you get two opposing desires, you know, which you can't always fulfill your desires. Um, uh, and using kind of human logic, uh, you can convince yourself of anything uh, if, if you can reason long enough and, and think about it. And there's smart people, you know, theorizing whatever and trying to convince themselves that there's no God or we don't have a purpose. Um, but I don't get my truth from philosophy. Uh, this man's philosophy is ever changing. Uh, my truth, the truth, comes from the Bible. Uh, anything I say up here could be a total lie if it's not coming from the Bible. That's, that's my basis for, for anything. Um, and so, um, I'm going to have a lot of Bible reading. If you guys want to open up to Isaiah uh, 3, uh, oh, sorry, Isaiah 43, starting at verse 6. 
having trouble finding Isaiah chapter 43. Ask Pastor Dan, he knows. <laughs> um, Isaiah 43, verse 6 and 7. Uh, I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, don't hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. And so right there, it says, we were created for God's glory. And that's what this message is about. Um, God is infinite and awesome. And if he, everything he did was just to praise himself, well, I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> he, uh, uh, what, what more can you do if you have everything? Um, and I'll just read from Genesis. Uh, at the beginning when God created uh, everything. Uh, it's from Genesis 1, 36. On, um, then God said, Let us make man in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea and birds of the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, eh, over all the creatures moving along the ground. And that right there has, has somewhat of a purpose uh, to rule over the, over the, over the earth. But uh, most importantly is the part, Let us make man in our own image. So God, so God created mankind in his own image, as verse 27 says. In his image, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Uh, I'll just keep reading. Uh, God blessed them and said, Be fruitful, increase in number, uh, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of, uh, in the sea and the birds of the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I will give every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit and seed in it. It will be your food. Um, and um, every, every day, you know, God created um, a new thing on the earth. God created the land, and God said it was good. And God created the animals, and God said it was good. Um, and the Hebrew word for the good is tav, which means good. And when he created man, he looked. God looked and saw everything and said he was very good. Uh, miad tav. Miad means very and good. And tav means good. So <laughs> it's very good. And that's exactly what it means. Um, <clears throat> I just threw this in there. My, um, you may find that my sermon is here and there, and try to grab the pieces and hold on to it. Um, I try to make a linear thing, but uh, it may not work that way. <laughs> so my, it's just a stream of consciousness that <laughs> we'll, we'll see. <laughs> um, I have a quote here from Gary DeMar. I'm not sure who that is. Someone I grabbed. Um, uh, it says, while belief in the invisible to us, uh, the nature of God is a philosophical no-no among evolutionists. Just being God, evolutionists aren't going to um, recognize that. Well, it's okay to believe in the invisibility of evolution. If this evolution entity that supposedly created life out of non-life and has developed a moral code for us to live by. Uh, so, <laughs> atheists, people don't believe in God, or rather believe in something that they can't see than believe in something else that they can't see. Uh, and most of this uh, s uh, actually sermon is, is uh, I found from uh, a man named John Piper, pastor. Uh, and I, I, th I believe I heard uh, about him uh, before other people. I don't know too much about him. But I ended up uh, reading uh, this big section he put out that, you know, about why why we were created. And so a lot of this comes from him. So actually this big part, I'm going to read that, excuse me, uh, about God created, uh, God created us for his glory. Um, uh, when the first chapter of the Bible says, so God created man in his own image, 
the image of God, he created him, and male and female who created him, as we just read. Um, so what's the point? The point of an image is to image. Images are erected to display the original, uh, glorify the original. When you set up a statue, it's about you know, pointing to the original. Uh, uh, God made humans in his image so that the world would be filled with reflections of God. Uh, images of God, seven billion, there's seven billion statues of God walking around so that nobody would miss the point of creation unless they were stone blind. They wouldn't miss the point of humanity, namely knowing God and loving God. Uh, angels cry in Isaiah uh, 3, 6. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. It is full of millions of human image bearers, glorious ruins, not only humans, but also nature, which is, which is a breathtaking world to live in. And why such a vast universe? Um, that's something that I've, I've thought about, too. Like, we're just, you know, the Earth is, seems pretty big, but it's a smaller part of the solar system and smaller part of our universe with many, many, many universes, and, and we're just this little speck. And why all that empty space? Uh, uh, why all that if we only use such a small part of it? And um, he didn't create the universe for us. He created the universe to show his glory and awesomeness. It's again, uh, yes, yeah, just showing his glory and just what, you know, what he can do. Um, uh, so Paul says in, so if you want to go to Romans uh, 1, for chapter Romans 20 and 21. And it talks about um, how, actually how plainly um, it's evident that if you just look around, you'll see, you'll see God. So Romans 1, 20 and 21. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. So it kind of tells me the universe is awesome and creation is awesome. And it's not going to take much for you to see that and, and not think that there's some, some awesome power behind it. But... Um, with the human nature, they are able to um, fool themselves and talk themselves out of it. Some people. Um, and uh, Piper goes on. Uh, his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in, in things that have been made. So they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. The great tragedy of the universe is that while human beings were made to glorify God, we have fallen short of this purpose and exchanged the glory of a mortal God for images resembling mortal man. And that's in Romans one twenty three. We exchanged um, images for mortal man and birds. Uh, actually, I'll read that right now. Um, uh, although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the mortal God for images made to look like mortal humans, human beings, and birds, and animals, and reptiles. Um, especially that human in the mirror. And this is the essence of what we call sin. Um, we just thought we were, um, worshipped ourselves and put ourselves first. And I believe that's what he's... Uh, implying about this. Um, uh, so why did God create the universe? Resounding through the Bible from eternity to eternity, like, uh, like rolling thunder is, God created the world for his glory. And thank you. No, I got a little more. <laughs> um, 
1 Corinthians 10.31 says, uh, whether then you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all in the glory of God. So anything we do, we should do in a way that's just bringing God glory. And people can see and just and be, you know, used in worshipful or know that God is behind your actions. Um. There's and there's a bunch of verses proving that just uh, more so because um, it's all about what the Bible says. Uh, in Isaiah 40, uh, 4 and 5, it says, Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill be made low, the rough ground shall become level, the rugged uh, places plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh sells, um, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And also in Isaiah 42, 8, I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. So God is the only one who gets glory, who gets praise. It should be. Also in Isaiah, all these verses in Isaiah. Um, uh, 48, 9, uh, through 11 says, For my name's sake, I defer my anger. For the sake of my praise, I restrain it for you. I have uh, tried you in the furnace of affliction. For my own sake, for my own sake, I do it. For how should my name be profaned? My glory will not, I will not give another, to another. Uh, in uh, 49.3 says, And he said to me, You are my servant Israel. Who, in whom I will be glorified. Uh, so God's chosen people, that's how God's glorified in a lot of, a lot of ways. Uh, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth. Uh, this is in 62, Isaiah 62. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness of the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen by you. And finally, in 61... Uh, starting well, the first three verses. Uh, the spirit of uh, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, to give them the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He may be glorified. So, well, throughout the Bible, um, a lot of verses in Isaiah talks about how God. Um, will be glorified, and that's and that's a uh, big purpose of well, that's a big goal of what God God has. Um, um, if you want to read some psalms, go to Psalms eight. I'll be reading some there. Let's read big chunks. Uh, looks like three through eight. Um, Psalms eight, three through eight. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have a place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You have made the rulers, uh, made them rulers over the works of your hands. And you put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds, the animals of the wild, the birds of the sky, and the fish of the sea that swim on the paths and seas. Um, and that's probably from an older thing of what, what, I guess, what is our purpose and how much glory that God um, gave us and um, that he made us a little lower than the angels. We have, um, we're just awesome people. <laughs> to God. Um, and Piper said something uh, about uh, glorify is different than beautify. We're not trying to exactly make God pretty. Um, God is all that and has all that. Uh, we compared it to a, a microscope. I don't even use that. Um, it's about a telescope, though. 
and just seeing how big and awesome God is and just uh, and uh, and being able to um, I just to, to really see it and understand him and understand this creation and and praise him for it um, yes we don't need to you know do more um, to God's uh, creation we just need to um, just really look at it and God you know he he did it all I don't know if that made any sense um, but this is the second part and so we were created for God's glory God created the earth for his glory we are here for his glory and that he can be seen and um, and just you can see everybody, everything, every creature, every person can see how awesome he is. Um, but most importantly, God's glory is shown through grace. Uh, the grace that Christ gave us through the forgiveness of our sins, through his death and resurrection. This is the ultimate glory of his grace. When I picked this topic, I didn't think this message would have salvation story in it. Um, I, 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 didn't, I didn't see it coming. Um, <laughs> I thought it was going to be, you know, you know, God created rocks, he created earth, he created people, and why, why is that? But um, he had it set up from the very beginning, um, his plan. Nothing, it wasn't, wasn't a surprise to him, and his grace um, is, uh, is proclaimed even before the creation of the world. Uh, Ephesians, I got, I got a lot of Ephesians, so if you want to turn to Ephesians, that would be awesome. I think I'm missing something. Hold on. Mm. Excuse me. Uh, Ephesians, first part I'm going to read is chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. Ephesians 1, 3 through 6 says, Praise be to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms uh, with every blessing, with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he has chose, for he chose us to, was there over verse 4, it says, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he presented us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, uh, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us to the one in the one he loves. And so he has chosen us, verse 4, he has chosen us to be uh, in him before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in his sight. And then in Ephesians 2, uh, 6 and 7, uh, God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming age he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in the kindness in, um, in Christ Jesus. To see, God didn't just use creation of the universe to display his glory. Before creation, he had a redemption all planned out. He had this planning, he had this planned out with his ultimate glory before the world began. He had, <laughs> um, uh, his ul the ultimate glory is, is uh, the forgiveness and his grace. That's, that's, where, that's where God really shines in... Um, being able to uh, forgive us and and showing compassion on us and um, yeah and that's and that's great and so if you go uh, to Ephesians like, oh the same part huh <laughs> go back to <laughs> one uh, uh, four through six again evidently for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. He presented us 
for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given in the one he loves. I'm not sure if I did that on purpose, but it's still a good verse. <laughs> Um, and then we'll go over to, this is a different section, uh, uh, skip over to Ephesians 2, 9 and 10. Uh, he has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, which I thought was awesome. This grace was given us, this this grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, before everything was created. There was Christ, and he already had grace on us, and his glory was in that and the creation of the world. Um, so this grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, uh, but now it has been revealed uh, through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death, and it, and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And he always had, he always had this plan. And Jesus came and fulfilled the plan. You know, that moment on the cross was all the grace, was all the plan, even for everybody, even before there was people and there was a, an earth. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. I was, uh, you know, I, I would think sometimes that um, why why God created the earth, and God has no time, and if God had no time, then why did He wait so long to create the earth? <laughs> These uh, uh, questions like that, and. Um, but I'm still, I don't understand time and, and God's, um, how God works and um, why we're here I, um, as, as a purpose. We have, we have a purpose to, to preach the gospel and to win souls. And, and, that, and we had a great sermon this morning of um, what happens in the end times and that um, there is... Uh, uh, it's life is not is not being done yet. Uh, there's still much more history to be written, and that is why you know, you know God didn't. Um, uh, that's why we're allowed to um, to be here. It's not a good way <laughs> to say that. Uh, sometimes I just wonder why, fr from an atheistic point of view, why why are we here? We live day and day, generation and generation, and what is what is the purpose? Um, you know, yes, you don't want to you know kill everybody and <laughs> destroy destroy humankind. I guess that's something that I just think about and why you know if you ever sit stand back and say why why what what's what's the point? And um, from a worldly point of view, what's the point of this going on? Um, but, um, but we know we, we have a purpose, and we're trying to reach those people <laughs> who don't have a purpose. And I hope this has been insightful. And yeah, I mean, God, glory! I should have, I should have said, okay, yes. <laughs> I did. I most of this I wrote this week, and how it. Um, um, it kind of evolves over the last week. It's just, oh, sing, sing songs about God's glory, you know? <laughs> How awesome. Yeah, now I tell you. So, yeah, <laughs> maybe next time. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to really gonna come to that. Um, you know, what is our purpose versus the rest of the world's purpose? And we'll, it kind of just changed into, we are here for God's glory. And I'm okay with that. That's if he wants to be glorified through me, that is awesome. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pray again. 
Uh, Father God, thank you for uh, this time here and uh, uh, the word you gave to me. And, and um, I guess what, what a great time that I had uh, learning about this. And I just ask the other, uh, these other people to be blessed too. And um, let this be uh, um, just a great time of remembrance uh, for me and, and how you were able to work. And I just love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Foundation Bible Church, inconveniently located two blocks northwest of the Jamesville Athletic Club.